Welcome. Here's a cute little pile, pile splitting puzzle. Excuse me. Imagine you had nine coins. I was writing number nine for nine coins. And the goal is to split them into two piles. And it can be quite arbitrary. Maybe do a pile of five and a pile of four. And when I do this, on the side of a, on a piece of paper, I'm going to write five times four is 20. Now I take the five pile and maybe split that into two. Maybe say two and three. And I'll write on the side of the product two times three is six. And maybe I'll split the four pile as well, maybe one and three. I'm just choosing quite num the numbers quite arbitrarily. So one times three is three. Uh, the two can split into one and one. One times one is one. Three splits into, say, two and one. In fact, I've got no choice there. Two times one is two. Uh, the two splits again into uh, one times one. One times one equals one. Uh, what is it? I've got a pile of three still. I can split that into, say, two and one. Two times one is two. And a two pile can split into one and one. 1 times 1 equals 1. So in this pile splitting game, I've now got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 piles of 1, just as you'd expect 9 coins become 9 piles of 1. And what I'm going to do now is add up all the products I've recorded on the right. So 20 plus 6 plus 3 plus 1, that's 30, uh, 36. So when I played the pile splitting game, I got the magic number of 36. Let's play it again. And I'll do a different choice this time. Maybe I'll do, say, 3 and 6 with a product of 18. And this 3 becomes 2 and 1 product of 2. This 2 becomes 1 and 1, product of 1. 6, maybe we'll do, say, uh, 4 and 2. They up to 6. Uh, that's a product of 8. 4 splits and say 2 and 2, product of 4. 1, 1, 1, 1, and 1, 1. That's 3 lots of 1 times 1. And the magic sum I got this time is 20, 29, 33, 36. In fact, every time you play this game, you get the magic sum of 36. So what I'd like to do in this video is explain why this is true. But um, before I carry on, you might want to just pause and try starting the game with, say, a different number of coins, maybe eight coins. You'll find you won't get the magic sum of 36, you'll get a different magic sum. Or uh, maybe with six coins or ten coins. And what pattern lies in the magic sums you get from this? Um, all right, so that's fun to do. But for now, I'll just stick with, say, nine coins, and we'll play the game uh, in an abstract way. What I'm going to do is explain this pile splitting puzzle. This is actually a famous puzzle that's out there, and a lot of people do it in a way about, uh, imagine there are strings between the coins that break as you separate them into piles. In fact, I, I talk about this puzzle in, uh, in Volume 1 of the Mathematics series, and it's appropriate for Chapter 2, where we have strings and counting triangle numbers. Ooh, just gave something away. Uh, so I do that approach in Chapter 2 of the book. But here's a more general approach. Instead of writing down the product, I'm going to say I've got a favorite function. Maybe f of x is some formula of any kind I like. And every time I split a pile, so I've got some pile, A plus B, which is supposed to split into A and split into B, I'm going to write on the side of my page F of A plus B minus F of A minus F of B. And I'm going to add up all those results. Now, before I was writing up the products, I'm doing something a little bit strange here, I do admit. But just take your favorite function, F of X equals whatever formula you like, and every time you split a pile, write down whatever F of A plus B minus F of A minus F of B equals. Now, let's go back to my particular puzzle. So I started with 9, and I wrote down 5 and 4. So I'm going to write on the side of a page f of 9 minus f of 5 minus f of 4. And then I went to 2 and 3. I'm going to write down now, add to that, f of 5 minus f of 2 whoops, minus f of 3. And the nice thing about that, this 5 was used as one of the piles, and then it was used, used to the start. So these f of 5s cancel. I also did the 1 and 3 with the 4. So I'm going to add to that f of 4 minus f of 1 minus f of 3. That intermediate step to the f of 4 is cancelled. I also split the 3 into 2 and 1. So I'm going to add to that f of 3 minus f of 2 minus f of 1. In fact, the f of 3s will cancel now. I also did uh, this 1 and 1 from the 2, plus f of 2 minus f of 1 minus f of 1. They cancel. In fact, as you keep going through this, every intermediate step is going to cancel. And you can see I'm going to be left with this f of 9 at the very beginning, and a whole bunch of these f of 1s. In fact, there'll be 9 of them, minus 9 f of 1s. So just by looking at how the cancellations work, I know whatever formula I do, and if I write down this quantity in this purple box now with green stars, and add up all those results, the answer is going to always be f of 9 minus 9 times f of 1, no matter what choices I make along the way for splitting. Now. Now, the fun part is choose different formulas for f of x. And I'm going to do a little, something a little strange here, but I'll start by choosing f of x to be 1 half of x squared. So that means every time I split a pile, I'm going to write down f of a plus b minus f of a minus f of b. What is that? That'll be 1 half of a plus b squared 
minus f of a, one half of a squared, minus one half f of b, one half of b squared. Expand the product, I'll get half a squared plus half b squared, which will cancel these final two terms. And the cross products is 2ab, that is just, when I divide by 2ab. So actually, that tells me, if I work with the function f of x equals half x squared, I'm just writing down the product of the two numbers I split into each time. And when I add these up, I must get an invariant result. And that result must be f of 9 minus 9 f of 1. In that case, it's 1 half of 9 squared minus 9 lots of 1 half of 1. So it's actually 1 half of 9 squared minus 9. I know I'm being a little bit sneaky, that's so what, 81 minus 72, half of 72 is 36. But it's actually 9 times 9 minus 1 over 2. Um, I've given it away completely. That's the formula for the eighth triangle number. All right, that explains the original puzzle that, that's out there in the world. But let's now have some fun with it. Let's choose other formulas for f of x. And, you know, I'll start with some basic ones. Uh, let's see how much time I have. Whoops, clear some space. Making a bit of a mess, I'm sorry. Uh, let's complete this box, so I need my pen. Do, 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 do. All right, uh, let's choose something basic. Let's just do f of x always equals negative 1. Then every time I play the game, I'm going to write down the quantity f of a plus b minus f of a minus f of b. What is that? There'll be negative 1 minus minus 1 minus minus 1. That's 1. So basically, every time I split a pair, I'm going to write down the number 1. I'm going to add them up. Well, I know the answer is going to be f of 9 minus 1 times f, uh, 9 f of 1, no matter what. In this case, that means the answer is going to be negative 1 minus 9 lots of minus 1. That's 8. So that's telling me every time I split a pair, I write down the number 1. They add up to 8 in the end. No matter what I do, there must be 8 pairs in my tree diagram. And in fact, let's check. 5 and 4 is 1 pair. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yep. The number of pairs in any diagram you do for splitting 9 must be 8. And you can probably argue other ways to see that's true. That's, that's actually not hard to see for other reasons. Um, let's do something different now. Let me make some space. Uh, how do I make space? There we go. Let's try f of x. Pen again. Whoops. f of x equals... I'm going to be a little bit strange. Let's make it 0 if x is even and 1 if x is odd. And uh, if I do that, then let's see what f of a plus b minus f of a minus f of b means. Well, if everything's even, this will be 0. So if a and b are both even, they're 0. If uh, 1 is even and 1 is odd, this will be odd. One of these will be odd, and the other will be even. So I'd get 1 minus 1 minus 0, again be 0. And if they're both uh, odd, it's the only other case left, this will be even, so it'll be 0 minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2. So it's basically minus 2 if both are odd and 0 otherwise. So every time I write down a pair, I'm going to write down the number negative 2 whenever I've got an odd, odd pair, and I'm going to write 0 in all other cases. So when I record things on the side of my page, I'm really counting how many odd, odd pairs there are. Well, I know the answer is independent of how I do the splitting, so that the answer is going to be f of 9, oops, minus 9 lots of f of 1. And if I look at that, uh, that is equal to 1, f of 9 is uh, 1 minus 9 is negative 8. And that is actually 4 lots of negative 2. So that tells me in any splitting diagram I do with this game of 9 coins, there's got to be 4 odd odd pairs. And let's see. I guess this 1 1 here is an odd odd pair. 2, 3, and where's the fourth one? Up there. Yep, there are 4 odd odd pairs. Which, by the way, since we've just proven the number of pairs is going to be the same, it's going to be 8, that also means the number of pairs with at least one even term is invariant in any diagram you do. So I'm going to invite you, I'll stop there, to start playing with other formulas. You can do any formula you like, but the key is to try to find a formula that has some meaning towards the diagram. Is it counting pairs? Is it counting products? Is it counting odd, odd pairs? You can do things like... Uh, let f of x be uh, 1 if it's a multiple of uh, 1 more than multiple of 3, 2 if it's 2 more than multiple of 3, and 0 if, it's, if it is a multiple of 3, and you get something with congruence results going on. Lots of fun in pile splitting. So go for it, and I'm your friends with this. It's a really neat puzzle. And again, some basics about this appear in, in Volume 1 of this thinking series, available on the website. Do, 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 do. All right, thanks very much.